bet you need a new link. Oh, we're, good. we're here. We're good. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Well, Come on in. Our stream health is great. Yes. We are here. Welcome. I'm going to see if I can get in. Let's hope so. Let's figure it. Yep, here I am. I'm in. I got to mute it so there's no back stuff. Sorry. Eh, it's okay. Oh, we have Technical people coming in. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Whoa. Hello, Bailey. Hello, Molly. Alyssa. Rosamond. Oh, what a perfect Shakespearean name, Rosamond. Blanca. Yes. Kai, Michaela. Bethany B. Yay. Jordan smash, Davis. Jared. Smash the like button. Bethany. Yay, yay, yay. Come on in. Come on in, friends. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Luthien. And I am one half of the girls with sables. My <laughs> other half is Emrys. Hello, hello. The pin be mighty as the saber. <laughs> okay. Yay. <laughs> that did not go Welcome, well. everyone. Hello. So many people bouncing in. Smash the like button. We're all here to discuss William Shakespeare's The Merry Rise of Skywalker. Ooh, very, very Palpatine there. Thank well you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. I could do about Skywalker. Yes. <laughs> My nephew can do a perfect Palpatine laugh. It, it cracks me up. <laughs> oh, I've been told I do a very good Kylo Ren. Oh, yes, you do. You do, in a, especially his his a tone and the way that he, uh, intonation. You do a marvelous Kylo Ren intonation. Thank you. We have wonderful mods in the house. Kayla loves Sun Taker, Jordan Davis, Nora. Thank you. Thank you for modding for us. Wait for a few more people to come in when we will start this discussion. And this was... This read, as M puts it, was very Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And it even had some Dickens in it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We'll get to that. We'll we get will to get to that. Our lovely Charles Dickens made his presence known in the merry rise of Skywalker. Jared says, I have not read any of the Shakespearean series, but I really want to. Oh. Hopefully this this spurs you into doing that and can we are like the cliff notes. Yes. Yeah. We are the, the live stream that helps you cheat. <laughs> oh, Michaela says, What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and girls with sabers are the sun. Rise, fair sun. Oh. I feel so lovely now. Thank you. That's so nice. She didn't call us the moon, which is ever-changing and moving. Yes. And constant. And constant, yes. yes. Yep. All right, shall we? Ah, Jordan, another reason to like girls with sables. I love the bard. I love that. One of my favorite romantic comedies, and I'm not a big romantic, romantic comedy person, but... Uh, it's not only one of my favorite romantic comedies, it's one of my favorite movies, is 10 Things I Hate About You. Yep. And I love that scene where <laughs> this girl who is a Shakespeare fan, like a fanatic, says the bard and I are practically, you know, practically engaged or something. I just love yep. that line. <laughs> yes. The bard and I are practically My favorite engaged. is Alyssa Olenek going... I know you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, but can you, can just, you just be whelmed? I love <laughs> Best. Best line. Yes, you can just be whelmed. And it, yes, uh, yes, as Molly Thomas points out, it is Taming of the Shrew. Ten Things yeah. I hang it, ha Hate About You is a modern adaptation of Ten Things I Hate About You. We need to we need to review it then, Luthien. Ten Things I Hate I'm About down. You. Like even the names. I'm so glad they na they kept the name Veron Veron Veronica and Cat and um, they kept all the characters' names. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
All right, shall we begin this wonderful evening? Merrily thus. Yes, merrily thus. And there's... Okay, so speaking of the term Mary, um, the author, uh, in his acknowledgement, tells you that he basically uh, used a lot of the Romeo and Juliet influences that many people pointed out when they were analyzing or discussing the rise of Skywalker, Lou friend, who is the uh, reader of of us, would you like to read that little paragraph that he wrote? I'm going to butcher his last name. So Ian, if you're reading my deepest and sincerest apologies, Ian Dosher. It sounds good. It looks like does share. But I think it's Dosher. It looks like the German variety, so that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, He states in the afterword, uh, at the end of The Merry Rise of Skywalker, goes on to talk about fortunate writing in the Star Wars universe now where there's so much media. He says, to go on, many people noticed that the final scene between Rey and Ben is similar to the end of Romeo and Juliet. One person appears dead, the other enters and sees them dead. Eh, This stream is not for children. Uh, The other enters and sees them dead, then the first person awakes and the other person dies. My adaptation gives full voice to that parallel, as Ray and Ben borrow lines from Juliet and Romeo, respectively, once Ben enters and sees Ray's lifeless body. Of course, edits were required. After all, when the scene is over, Ray is still alive, unlike Juliet. In 2019, I listened to the audiobook of William Shakespeare's Star Wars for the first time in a few years, and I was reminded how strict my iambic pentameter was in my first book. Not only did I adhere to the meter, but I used almost no weak endings, which is an 11th syllable at the end of the line. As I started writing William Shakespeare's The Merry Rise of Skywalker, I decided to give myself the challenge of stricter iambic pentameter than I've used in years. As a result, not that I expect you to have noticed, there are fewer than 10 weak endings in this book. He's talking about the the couplets, basically, at the very bottom. Um, iambic pentameter is extremely difficult to write. So no matter if you love this book, like this book, hate this book, um, just the fact that he wrote it in iambic pentameter, kudos to you. (laughs) Kudos to you. Chef's kiss, man. (laughs) From what I've read of this, I was not fully able to read from start to finish. I did, was able to like definitely read it in certain chunks, but from all that I did, was able to read, kudos, sir. I mean, <laughs> so, See, it flows so well. I'll go English teacher on you guys, yep. but iambic pentameter basically means iambic is two syllables of a uh, unstressed and a stressed syllable. Like, shall I compare the two? It takes mm-hmm. a linguistics ear to realize what word is stress and what word is stressed. So you have five pairs of those unstressed stressed, um, which are like five meters. So that's where you get the pentameter because one stress and unstressed. Blah, 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 blah. So you have ten syllables per line that you have to to have to adhere to. That's why he says there are some that he had to add another syllable count is because he limited himself to the iambic pentameter of having two pairs of stress unstressed syllables, 10 syllables per line and keeping to that rhythm. And also the, the couplets of rhymes, but we're not going to go into that because that would be very difficult to communicate <laughs> via live stream. Like I would have to get my, whiteboard and and marker out and everything but that should sound confusing to you and if it does then good because that is how difficult yeah this writing is yeah winter song hard as hell to write exactly so know that when m who is well versed in all this says this was one of the most impressive feats it is because it's so very hard to write like that uh, but this flowed so well 
and you can tell the experience he has with it. Uh, it was just so, so good. So the fact that you did an extra syllable here and there, you know, please don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Dosher. Yeah. Just, just to do every single, every single movie in the Skywalker saga and do it in, in Shakespearean iambic pentameter is just, uh, uh, that is kudos. I can't, I can't think, guess enough Think of, about it. if you're not familiar with Shakespeare, um, but you are familiar with, uh, Ray Carson's Rise of Skywalker novelization, just know that what Ian does in this book is very similar to what, like, the, the juicy nuggets Ray gave us in the Rise of Skywalker novelization. There are moments where that, we, in our opinion, they do fall a little flat, but there are other moments that just completely shine because it is in this style. Yeah. It's so so good. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that coming and, up. And like um, you said, it's the best of times. It is the worst of yeah. times. There is times that this iambic pentameter, like Luthien says, makes Ben and Ray's soliloquy and lines and and Leia's lines. Just there's a couplet of Leia's uh, that is just so beautiful. Um, but then there is a couplet of bins. And when I'm saying, I'm not saying couple, I'm saying couplet, meaning two lines that rhyme of bins that just made me furious <laughs> and enraged. Yeah. So we're going to discuss it. But it, when we are critical of this work, I just wanted to preface with the iambic pentameter praise to, to say that this is in no way trying to belittle the work of the Mary Rise of Skywalker because the fact that it exists and that it upholds to what Shakespeare did with the language, I I am amazed at and will forever be grateful for Ian um, Dosher's work. So should we merrily thus through <laughs> through the book now? Yes. Yes, okay. let us. Let's. Um, something that we just discussed was how he he used the Mary uh, Rise of Skywalker. He used the Romeo and Juliet illusions, and he does like he flat out quotes lines from Romeo and Juliet and puts them in Ben's mouth, <laughs> like word for word for word, which is interesting. And and this is one of the best of times, worst of times, because Shakespeare named. Romeo and Juliet, the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. It's a tragedy where this is the merry rise of Skywalker. So you have a tragedy uh, and then you have a comedy. And this kind of shows you the tonal switch problems mm -hmm. of the rise of Skywalker in general. I'm not blaming it on uh, Mr. Dozier. <laughs> It's not his fault. <laughs> um, but it is not the Merry Rise of Skywalker. If it's Romeo and Juliet, it is the tragedy of Skywalker. Anything else that you would like to speak of that, Marilee, this friend? Nay. <laughs> Nay. So, allow <laughs> move us on. Um, yes. So we lay our scene um, with the prologue, just as Romeo and Juliet begins. We uh, have Kylo saying basically the same two lines uh, that uh, um, Romeo and Juliet begins with. Uh, Romeo uh -huh. and Juliet begins with two households, both alike in dignity, in Verona, where we lay our scene. And Kylo says, do you want to read Kylo's section, friend? Yeah. Two rivals, both alike in dignity, among the planets where we lay our scene. I wonder why he just didn't keep households, because basically that's what it is. It's the households of, of Palpatine and the household of Skywalker. Um, two rivals, both alike in dignity. Again, um, he repeats that line in red. Uh, the one in green, I put in green because it was one of those things that just um, boiled my blood. 
because I don't see Kylo thinking this way with Rey. I don't see no. her, him as wanting her to bow to him. He didn't say bow down to me. He's, he, he extended his hand out, both in The Last Jedi and in The Rise of Skywalker. Um, it wasn't like you... It, it just sounds so... Um, Mel point of view. <laughs> that oh, Nora, Nora just said it best. She's like, I'm going to say it, and I love Shakespeare tragedies, but if I were Disney, I wouldn't have picked Romeo and Juliet ending plot to finalize a 40-year saga. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, 100% truth right there. Winter Song asks, are there some good monologues like Hamlet or the Queen Mab monologue in Romeo and Juliet? There is no Queen Mab speech. I would love to have heard Poe <laughs> or Finn yeah. describe Queen Mab in, in, from Romeo and Juliet. Um, there is a type of Hamlet speech, uh, Hamlet soliloquy to be or not to be. No, it's. I wouldn't say it's a Hamlet soliloquy. I say it is a um, Prince Hal becoming Henry V soliloquy which we'll, we'll get to. And I, I love some Henry V. So that's another thing that we have discussed is how Kylo could be Henry V. It's not as perfectly as we thought it would play out. And it would be much better if it played out the way that we thought it would play out. <laughs> I think if we're good. going from what we saw in The Rise of Skywalker, then the stuff in green would make sense. But coming off of The Last Jedi, what we saw in The Rise of Skywalker, Kylo's mannerisms didn't make sense at all. So no. that's why, yet only one shall rule the galaxy, and Rey, the young prodigious Jedi she, hath talent like mine, though she is green. <coughs> Two rivals, both alike in dignity. The day will come when she shall bend the knee. That makes sense for the Kylo we had in Tross, and the Kylo we had in The Force Awakens. But it doesn't make sense at all to the Kylo we had at the end of The Last Jedi. So that's where this contradictor, contradiction lies. Well, and it's frustrating. It's, it's definitely frustrating because you have a lot of fans going, oh, I totally see it. And then you have other fans like us going, what the heck's going on? Well, it's because they have only one viewpoint of Kylo Ren. Right, you know, he right. He is the villain. He's a bad guy, and he only wants Rey for bad reasons, and that's not true. Uh, Kylo was extremely vulnerable to Rey in The Force Bonds. So people who see him just as a pure um, antagonist are forgetting what Ryan Johnson said, and he said that mm. they are dual protagonists. Yeah. We are supposed to be for Kylo. Um not Kylo Ren, um, but Ben Solo. We are supposed to be for the boy that is stuck inside the shell of Ky Kylo Ren. Oh, Alec. Alec just said he should have reformed the First Order into the Third Republic. Yes. That would have been so much more powerful than Fleet Ex Machina. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's that's one of the things that we thought he was going to do when we had this Henry yeah. V idea of... He was going to get his stormtroopers together and he was going to go to the resistance and say, hey, we have a bigger fish to fry here. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I am going to use my stormtroopers, my, you know, my army and combine it with the resistance and then let's take them down together. I mean, it, that was a Palpatine's. Um, it's like, you're coming together. It will be your undoing. <laughs> so if they fought together, then they could have all won together. And the resistance in the galaxy could have seen what Ben Solo would have done. And they would have been more likely to forgive him because they saw him redeem himself. The galaxy's eyes saw Ben Solo redeem himself. If he led that like a, a, a hero did. <sighs> It's a tragedy. It's all a tragedy. <laughs> I'm going to be like, no, our coming together is going to undo you, old man. 
The problem with using Romeo and Juliet is Romeo and Juliet once is not a is not romantic. I mean, it's so can, flawed. People can say it's romantic, but what they're forgetting is that these are two children that have just um, met each other. Like they yeah. fell in love with each other within a night. Mm -hmm. um, and Romeo was already in love or quote unquote in, lo in love with someone named Rosamond. That's mm -hmm. why he goes to the ball in the first place. And then he says he's Juliet and he's like, Oh, well who's Rosamond? This girl is prettier. And she's only 12 years old. Juliet is only 12 years old in this play. Romeo is about 17. So you're seeing two children in love, making very impulsive decisions because they're not being cared for, they're not being loved. Why? It's because their parents are in a rivalry with each other and they're just trying to kill the other and take them down and their children are put in the crosshairs of that fire. Their children just want to be together, but they're, both of their households are built on hate and revenge. And Romeo and Juliet die because of that hate, so their parents can see the consequences, so both lines are wiped out. That's the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet, is it took these children's lives for their yes. parents to see their errors. Preach! It's not the fact Preach that, it. you know... Oh, how lovely. They died to be with each other. That's not the case. The case is they were, they were children in the crossholds. In fact, the last couplet, the last two lines um, in Romeo and Juliet are spoken by the prince. Mm -hmm. And the prince says this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, the prince says, For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Shakespeare is saying, this is the saddest story I can ever write of two children who take their life. Re remember, uh, the, the, one of the m lesser famous lines, but still famous, a plague on both your houses. Yes. No one wanted anyone to survive this and what happens the two uh faces the the purest the children the purest faces of this tragedy are what made the tragedy they passed and that's what it took that's what it took to to wake up their families well you know then it was too late yeah. it woke them up yay yeah. what do they have to show for it the death of their children the fearful passage of their death marked, that means their love mm -hmm. is marked with death, and the continuance of their parents' rage, the parents' continuous hate, which but their children's end not could remove. And he's saying basically it, it, uh, it took the children's death to, to wipe away the, the parents hate and come together mm -hmm. because now they share a moment of tragedy. They share the mutual death of their children and their bloodline forever. So uh, I, I have to say, and I don't think this is purely um, Ian um, Dosher's meaning, but I, I really have a hard time thinking that, um, it's the merry rise of Skywalker if you're going to pull so heavily from Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Molly Thomas said, you ladies should have written nine. Tell oh, us something yes. we don't know. We're, well, we, we thank keep, you, Molly. We keep thank on you. thinking about doing that because both of us basically within two years of working together have had the whole plot of <laughs> episode nine flushed out in our heads. So like, there's some times where I'll start opening a Word doc and I'll start writing away and uh, making the first draft of it. And then I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> see, this it's is so this. Hard. You need to clue me in on this because then that's when the magic happens and it bounces back and forth. Because remember I said that whole Henry the fifth thing and then it like flew into like Poe not being able to fly the Falcon and it just went crazy pants. 
And then something happened and it completely lost, like it fell out. But Oh, I took notes uh, about that. Oh, okay, I took cool. Notes about Nora, that. Nora goes, oh, I lost it. Shoot. Ah, back to your topic, ladies. I think that line with Ray kneeling to Kylo, do you think that this is where a male point of view writing a movie yes. uh, that should be a female point of view? And then she goes, Ryan Johnson is just an anomaly. Yes. A- absolutely, 100%. Yep. 100%. This is the male it, point of view. Yep. Mm-hmm. It goes um, back yeah, to... Yeah, all Molly Tom's all here are punished. Yep. Yep. All here are punished. All In here. the film and the fans. <laughs> That's why as Shakespeare wrote Twelfth Night right after Romeo and Juliet because he's like, this play was so sad and so hard and hurt everyone, inflicted everyone with pain seeing two children die. So I am going to write a comedy called Twelfth Night where um, everyone ends happily. There's a double wedding and uh, we can celebrate and party and try to heal from the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. <sighs> Shakespeare, you should have written. <laughs> <laughs> Augustus Stigma says, oh my God, please release your plan of what nine should have been. I need hope. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, let us know. Let us know if in the comments below or, you know. If you would like the rise of Skywalker as Girls with Sabers. Sabers intended it to be. Yes, yes. Blanca says, but in the soundtrack in The Force Awakens, when Kylo Ren ca- uh, bridal carried Rey from Takadana to his shuttle, uh, we can hear a little bit of Romeo and Juliet mixed with Kylo and Rey's theme in the song. Yes. And yes, we do. Uh, uh, John Williams talked about inserting that in there but it's almost and and jj too it's it's almost a misdirect in in doing that it was one of those little mystery music mystery boxes of oh there it is uh but as we all know this is star wars not romeo and juliet and what can these two quote unquote lovers do to overcome the tragedies of predecessors I, I, like Anakin and Padme? I think cause I, I talked to Jordan about this last night cause he also brought that up, but that ends on a, a major, that ends in a major chord on a minor chord. So it doesn't. Yes, end, it did end on major chord. It didn't. It didn't end on a minor chord, which means uh, a bad ending. It ended on a major chord. So I don't think that the Force Awakens foreshadowed Romeo and Juliet by putting that that uh, alluding to that in the Force Awakens because it ended happily. It ended, oh, what is this? It's it's building suspicion, and then it rises, and they twirl together, and then they end major note. Like, Ray goes off into the adventure. He gets, She goes off into his shuttle, and it's it, it they soar in the air on a high note, on a major chord. So people who say, oh, but we were forewarned and Force Awakens, and we know that this was always the plan, I really don't believe that. Um, I really don't believe that, especially with The Last Jedi, I don't believe it. I, I feel like so much of the the tragedy of, of The Rise of Skywalker happened in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker itself, because The Last Jedi and the media and everything that was released up to like um, October of 2019 was was hinting of a romantic romantic idealistic um, relationship. Like even the idea of lovers are split in the second act. Well, they come together on the third act. Well, Romeo and Juliet come together in the second act, and then they split in death in the third act. That's not how. That's not how things are written. <laughs> um, speaking of things that have been written, Raylo memes sent a super chat, and 
it can because the chat was going so fast it it fluttered up and geeky stuff you posted a comment that i unfortunately had to hide i'm sorry but it had a curse word in there and you know we could get flagged and blue blah blah but i had to hide it but not that doesn't negate the fact that it spoke my sentiments because now I read this super chat and I agree with it. This question's effed up. Raylo memes with a super chat. Thank you so much. There's a button. If you press it, Ben Solo comes back and reunites with Ray. But Baby Yoda dies in Mandalorian season two. Do you press the button? Do you want to answer that or are you wanting me to answer that? Um... We can we can answer it. I'll count down. I don't press the button. I would never press the button. Because what Emerson and I can write, we could write something super dope, not only for the end of trust, but probably like just piggyback onto the ending we got and just like totally do a Ben Solo in the world between worlds coming back. Like what Em and I could write is probably gonna be better than anything that's gonna come out you know, period. So then best of both worlds, M and I write it. Well, pretty much M I'll edit it and add my two cents. And then we still get to keep baby Yoda. So I'm not pressing the button and it's still enough to question <laughs> right low memes, but thank you for the super chat. Well, I think she's giving you like, the, I know it's it. Yeah. It's the worst of all. It's a Sophie's choice type of question. Like, do you sacrifice? Oh, totally, yes. If you sac- do you sacrifice Ben for Baby Yoda? If you can make Star Wars do something, what would I you- would sacrifice Ben Solo for Baby Yoda. Yeah, I said it. <gasps> no. Okay. I would sacrifice Ben for Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda, I cannot. You, oh, it's it's Benji. It's it. Give me some other like super nostalgic like. Uh, I can't, like, I can't. You you start personifying uh, non-human entities that are, like, animalistic, but, like, they're cute as buttons. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Freaking Care Bears? No. I, I would sacrifice Ben Solo for, for Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. I got to, because like I said, you and I could write dope stuff. Like so many other people have written dope stuff about Ben Solo coming back and rewriting Tross or like extending, you know, extending it into episode 10, you know, name a scenario and it's, it's being done. I'm like, we have all that. Ben Solo's ours. No one can take Ben Solo away from us. So yeah, I would say, I would save baby Yoda. I can't in, in baby form or in little, little child form. I can't sacrifice him. I can't do it. Yeah, I agree with John Rossi, but Ben would give himself. I definitely Exactly. Exactly, yes. Ben Solo would sacrifice himself for baby Yoda. <sighs> but if if I could the way that I interpreted that is if I could give the fate to Disney, if I had to choose like either baby Yoda or Ben Solo. I would choose Ben Solo. And the reason is, is because the Skywalkers are Star Wars to me. The right. But now that we've had baby Yoda, I can't give him up. Now that I have seen baby Yoda and what he can do and how adorable he is. Yeah. Blanky from the brave little toaster. I can't do it. I can't, I can't sacrifice him. I've, I, I've had it already. No, I love him. Don't get me wrong. I named him Sweet yeah. Pea, and Sweet Pea he is. Sweet Pea. Yes, I can't I can't do it, especially since we named him. Now that we named him, it's over. It's like naming a, a stray dog. No, once you name him, like, it's over. I just could not. It, it, oh, my gosh. Alec, woke. Baby Yoda resurrects Ben. <laughs> Done no, deal. I think, I think Ben needs to be the the protagonist be the advocate for himself if he resurrects he's gonna do it on his own he's not gonna have ray help him or anything it's gonna be 100 percent his agency and his and his um getting to her raylo memes with another super chat here's the problem with ben's sacrifice there's no indication he knew he'd die 
For all he knew, he'd be fine. So was it really a sacrifice? Raylo memes, we will get to that. <laughs> yep, that's coming up, Raylo memes. So thank you so much we for another super, super chat. Uh, more mods in here. Jay Rossi, 2Med2 two two Star Wars Network. Thank you so much for dropping in and chatting. Uh, but yeah, Raylo memes, that, that your newest super chat, we're going to get to that. We'll, which we'll get to that. Which also lets us know, hey, we got to start talking more Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's move on. So, let's do this. Um, ben uh, uh, talks about how he wants Roy to bow down. Oh, oh, Ian Dosher. <laughs> and Palpatine, as soon as Kylo comes in, Palpatine says, I died before, yet death retains me not. The underworld is no match for the Sith. Again, you have this Hades reference of the underworld. Um, so I think they're really, uh, Ian Dosher being a literary person, being able to write iambic pentameter means that you have studied the English language. Um, and the amount of allusions that he's making in this work, I think he is saying there's this Hades, Dante, um, Hell, um, Purgatorio, Paradiso um, reference there, and we'll we'll pick up that on that again and make another reference. But the stage has been set. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the stage has been set. Um, moving on, we're going to raise training, um, and we have, I think, a first wink wink to Romeo and Juliet. Um, yeah, friend Lou, would you mind reading that for us? Yep, from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Remember, Romeo is not full-on speaking to Juliet here. He sees her and is and is speaking of her, but he's not speaking to her. She does not uh, hear it. Um, a lot of people misconstrue scene. that. Yeah. But, but she can't hear it at that moment. He is just looking upon her. He sees her, she doesn't see him, and he is speaking of her. Kylo goes, well, well I want to read the whole thing because yes. I love how this bounces back and forth, which is a very call and response thing. Ray, once I had no one, lived a lonesome life, reclaiming wreckage back on dour Jakku, yet longing to be known, accepted, loved. Kylo says, our earlier connection I'll restore, that she and I communication share. Oh, mask once worn by my grandfather strong, grant me the power to find her once again. I feel her fury burning with the heat of sun that rises o'er a desert plain. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Ian, Ian! Those asterisks are meaning that that is, those are our spaces in between that. So... Yep. That's Ray soliloquy as she is training in the forest, and then you know she Kylo wants to reconnect with her, and you see him place his hand on the mask. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Sorry, but I'm going to. That's what <laughs> I thought was happening with the mask, and people told me no. <laughs> but yep, Ian, I just want to say Emrys was right, y'all. Emrys was right. Ian is my he. We are in the literary wavelength, and he <laughs> saw what I saw. So yep. thank you, Ian. You gave me credibility. I rest my case. <laughs> yep. Going on. And Kylo continues, her visions are mine own, as if we two shared but one eye, one ear, one mind, one heart. It's not Shakespeare, but that is West Side Story. Yep. When Maria and Tony get married, and yep. they say, make of, um, make of our heart, one heart, one, make heart. Of yep. one hand, one, that's their song. When they metaphorically get married, this mm-hmm. is a marriage language. Yeah. And it's an allusion to, to West Side Story. So, Ian. And then it turns and then it turns into Gollum after that. I must needs find her and discover more. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> when there when there is Lord of the Rings, we can't help ourselves. Yeah. Well, sorry. When uh, you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first summer to your last dying day. <laughs> Make us, uh, Boy, oh man, oh man, you're king. We were, uh, Lou and I were talking about West Side Story. I can't remember the, I can't remember why, but 
um, it came to my thought that Luke should probably be singing a boy like that <laughs> to Ray yes. from. <laughs> a yes. boy like that will give you trouble. <laughs> You'll find another boy tomorrow. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, uh, don't get me song. started. Duh. Okay. One of your own kind. Stick to your own kind. Um, Act three, (laughs) our uh, first four spawns. So, again, we're jumping around a lot. We're just giving you little highlights, things that uh, delighted our Shakespearean eyes and thoughts and the senses and then things that um, will forever make us feel like we're Oedipus and we need to have the same reaction as as he did. (laughs) Yeah. Ray enters Kylo Ren's aside, or enter Kylo Ren, sorry, enter Kylo Ren's side on Kajimi, but communicating with Ray through the Force. Ray, wheresoever thou, thou be, art hard to find, Ray says, and thou most difficult to be rid of, as though a parasite in thy host. Ugh. And I thy host. Kylo, I pushed thee in the desert for one cause. I needed to see thee. And needed thee. <laughs> See, there are some gems in this this book here. <laughs> Enter Ray to Kylo Ren's chamber. Tis not a random room. Tis Kylo Ren's. <laughs> Into his private chamber I shall give the full cause of my coming. Take the knife. Um... I'm skipping dun, dun, dun. A, a lot, but I loved his not a random room, his Kylo Ren. Like yes, the Force brought, the Kylo Force Ren's. brought you yeah. back to his private chambers, Ray. The Force is telling you what to do, girlfriend. The Force is telling you what to do. <laughs> it is the Force as well. <laughs> that you're in. <laughs> it's not a random room. It is Kylo freaking Ren's private chamber. <laughs> the stream is not for children. Okay. <laughs> Um, then, uh, this kind of leads into, uh, Kylo telling her who she is. She's a Palpatine. They're a dyad in the forest, blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. I'm not showing any of that because really there's nothing there except what is said in the movie screen. There's not a, a comment that thrills my soul nor hurts it. It's just, it's just there. What is interesting is he gives Ray a soliloquy yes. uh, when she's on the Falcon that she tells herself. Um, so this, I thought, was very, at the very beginning, this first line is screams red string theory to me. I love it. Ray, knit our threads of fate with strands of blood. I did prefer my former poverty, not knowing that my parents had the wealth of parentage and ancestry to boast. Fie, this unmasked for affluence doth reek, perturbing perturbing birthright legacy of filth, as if the drops of Palpatine's rank blood let loose within my veins were naught but bile, polluting any good with utter hate. This exactly, I feel like Ray is echoing the thoughts of of us. Us Mm -hmm. who love Ray Nobody. This is exactly how we felt. (laughs) Yeah. I did prefer my former poverty. (laughs) And Kylo Ren, what shall I do with him? The words he spoke that we a dyad are. Is it possible he may be credited? Ne'er did I hope to join our two accounts. And when his offer is the galaxy, Ray is not Ren. Yet what shall Ray then be? Oh, Ian, Ian! Yeah. Kudos. But I will say that the never do I hope to join our two accounts. Uh, yes, you did, Ray. Well, yes, she said did. ne'er did I hope to join our two accounts. Uh, yeah, she did. Yeah, she wanted to. It, it's but, like you're canceling out in, no. in the entirety of the latter half of the last jedi she is basically and, and he's gonna say that but basically in a right. soliloquy um you are are you get to hear what the uh, the character's innermost thoughts are i think right here she's denying what she wanted because kylo has said now twice in the in the play or the movie um you wanted to take my hand why didn't you and she's denying that to herself. I didn't want to take your hand. Never did yeah. I. Um, oh, Ray. Oh, Ray. 
He Hi, Jello. Been. He's in here. Uh, huh? YouTube recommended this to me. Welcome. Come Welcome. On in. We, we allow all into our humble abode and hope you're liking what you're listening to. So, yeah. Sit down and listen to some uh, The Bard Tells Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you don't like it, we just ask you to be kind and just watch something else. Yeah. But welcome. You welcome, can welcome, welcome. constructive welcome. criticism. That's okay. Different opinions are good. Just not hate and tearing down the things. Okay. Anything else that I will I will say when uh, I heard, Ray, you're a Palpatine. You don't just have your power. You have his. I, I felt what she says. Spy. Legacy. Oh, death, yeah. As if the drops of Palpatine's rank blood less loose within my veins were not but bile. Yes, yeah. I felt some bile in my mouth. Yep. <laughs> I heard that. I was like. Oh, more than bile. <laughs> All right. Merrily, we skip to the duel. <laughs> yes. Leia. Uh -huh. Oh, this is, yeah. So good. Act four. Enter General Leia Organa on balcony. Enter R2-D2 and Maz Kanata on balcony aside. Leia, what shadows spread their darkness o'er my sight? The Force speaks in clear visions unto me. My son and mine adopted daughter caught in conflict vicious, battling to the death. I'm going to warn you. There's a lot of this son and daughter reference here. Not yeah. Not only with Leia, but with um, Ray and Ben um, in the future. Um, and for those who will see that and go, ooh, Star Wars is saying they're, you know, they're, they're, they're brother and they're, sister, they're, blah, yeah. blah, 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 no, blah. No. Like, if you, even if you read Romeo and Juliet, Romeo calls Juliet his cousin. Um, and it's that kind of language that J.J. Abrams was alluding to. Um, that has that kind of Song of Solomon edge, that you're my sister, my bride, you are family. Um, and that's what she's seeing when she sees in the force that Ben and Ray are fighting. She's like, oh, um, I've got to get in here. Mama sees this and Mama is mad and I've got to tear these two kids away from each other yeah. because I need to get married and have grandbabies because I need someone to pass Padme's clothes down to. I said it. <laughs> Yeah. I said it. <laughs> okay. Carry on. Carry on in this. Ray. It's an aside. So she's, they're not uh, talking to themselves. I mean, they're not talking to each other. Our skill and power is matched most perfectly, Kylo. Our acumen and strength are Ray. He tries to strike. I stop him by the force. Kylo. She tries to swipe the dark side. Stoppeth her. Ray, a dyad certainly, if air there was. This is so Beatrice and Benedict. Yep. I mean, like, basically, they are trading barbs here. You know, oh. your sk our skill and power is matched. And she, he's like, yes, our human and strength are. Like, it's almost, you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Kyla, is not the realization older. of our fates conjoined doth break upon her face E'en as these waves come crashing o'er the ramparts hereabout, she knoweth she shall ne'er defeat me here, for we are unified at every point. I guarantee the realization of our fates conjoined doth break upon her face, and then those waves come crashing over the ramparts hereabout. I guarantee that's the scene where he goes, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yup. You know, because he's coming through the waves and you see Ray just gird her loins. <laughs> gird like, your loins. <laughs> you know, like no one knows me. Well, in fact, that's what she's trying to do. Like she's, yeah. she's feeling vulnerable. She still has feelings for him, but they're like, they're doing a solo uh, lover's quarrel here. Yep. Yep. It's like when a, a lover or two fight, like, you don't know who I am. No one knows me. You don't know me at all. And he goes like, oh, please, I do too. <laughs> no and then, and then you like have Leia and it says, calling softly. Oh, Ben, my boy, my son, a mother's bliss. <laughs> I 
I'm okay. I just got shot in my heart. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it gets worse. A good Ray, worse. A good worse. The air I have long awaited. Strike! Ray ignites Kylo Ren's saber and runs him through with it. Leia. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Ben. Noble Ben. Yes. Mine and thy father's death come not on thee. Leia dies. Oh. Ray. What have I done? This gentle lad lay low. Let's just stop Who is the only vestige now of her? Shall I give my life for an enemy's? Shall sacrifice become mine epitaph? But is he, rightly said, mine enemy? And would I ask a fonder epitaph? If I may healing proffer, yea, I shall. In mourning for my Leia, gone too soon, I'll render back the son that once she lost. Ray places her hand on Kylo Ren's injury and transfers life to him through the Force. He is healed. Kylo, this touch, an unexpected clemency. If we go back to exchange forgiveness with me, noble Ben, mine and thy father's death come not yep. on thee. I just wish haters would soak on those, that couple yes. right there. Because what that she was is, such a wonderful line Ian put in. Yes, because that's basically, uh, she says, that's exactly what Han says in the book. Yes. It's like, as he puts his hand on his son's face, he hopes that he forgives his son and he hopes his son forgives him. That's exactly what Leia is saying. I hope you forgive me and everything that I, how I neglected you. Ben, and he goes, she goes, I do not blame you for my death, nor do I blame you. For your father's death. And we were we were right in that. Yeah. Uh, so many, M, myself, so many others said Leia would never, ever blame her son for Han's death. Yeah. And in here we read it. Words that we, if she, if, if Carrie Fisher had lived, we would have heard her say in the, you know, English version. Yeah. Mine and thy father's death come not on thee. I don't want you punished for them. Right. And even in The Force Awakens, uh, behind the scenes, it said Leia sitting down when Kylo killed Han. She felt Kylo's anguish in that moment. What, does everyone who thinks... Kylo Ren deserves death because he killed Han. Are they forget that? Do they just don't care? They must, they just don't care yeah. because that literally came out of the director's mouth and Carrie Fisher's mouth. She felt her son's instant reg regret, instant regret yeah. and anguish. Yeah. Like if Kylo, so many people have these moments where they think Kylo fully crossed over. Oh, mm -hmm. he crossed over when he burned the Jedi Temple. Well, no, go read Rise of Kylo Ren. Oh, he crossed yep. over when he killed Han. No, he didn't. Because if he was all, you know, mess, mustache twirling evil dude, once he killed Han, he would have, you, you, you would see this like evil look come over his face that mm, he's tasted blood finally he sought his revenge and he earned it he didn't his mouth gapes open wide and you see his whole body just cave in it's it's horrific. nora exactly the deed split you to the bone exactly exactly and who uh, yeah jay rossi carrie would never have stood for ben dine in the finale amen yeah I agree with that. She never would have stood for that. Ever. Ever, ever. I think that's why she stormed the gates at the, at the press. The press where, did you see that? I don't know if, if everyone saw that, but at the Rise of Skywalker press, uh, they were talking about uh, Leia um, and Carrie Fisher. And J.J. Abrams was talking about how he worked with her. And I think it was something like, you know, it was an honor doing so, blah, blah, blah. But right then and there, mm -hmm. like, there's this big old noise. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it was like Carrie Fisher's ghost saying, I will hunt you to the end yep. of the earth, J.J. Abrams. <laughs> you go, Carrie. <laughs> I love this next part where you know right after goes kylo this touch an under unexpected clemency mm -hmm. my wound is gone 
Thus hath she done for me. And Ray goes, "'Twas true that once I'd long to take thy hand, yet not the hand of Kylo Ren. Ben's hand. Oh. Clemency. It's so simple. Forgiveness, atonement. Yep. Yeah, it's like, that is a, that is a political judgmental, like, clemency means you are completely forgiven for the crimes mm-hmm. that you have done, you know? Uh, it's atonement, restitution. It's beautiful. Oh, and oh, sure. Good, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> and then we got, we just had mother, son, sob, sob, uh, emo hours. And now we're going to get father, son, sob fest. With a little bit emo of a hours. rage. <laughs> uh, Prepare for alone. rage. Alone. And this is after Ray leaves. So we have Ben here. Alone, directionless, yet still alive. I am abandoned on this sopping steel. Enter ghost of Han Solo. Han. Holla. No, sorry. (laughs) That just like took all the emotion out of it. Holla, my child. Oh, how I miss thee, boy. Oh, oh, still, still missing. Oh, Kylo, thy son is dead. Han, nay, Kylo Ren is dead. My son, my boy, my Ben, he liveth yet. Kylo, thou art a memory and nothing more. (sighs) Thou art mayhap some undigested beef. Thou art more gravy than come from the grave. And this part is the part Emrys just completely bleh. Blind rage. Yes. How dare they? How dare you use my Dickens and my Shakespeare in such a horrible manner? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I passed out and fell asleep and all of a sudden I saw her tweet and I, and I read this and I went, oh dear. Yes. Oh, d d d dear yes. Okay, so this is... <laughs> you made a <him> mad. <laughs> you made me furious because not only did you, you... Oh, okay. Okay, so let's break it down for these good folks. All right. Um, so Kylo, when he sees Han, he's saying, okay, maybe I ate something bad, like some beef that I have not properly digested. Um, you are more gravy than comes from the grave. So again, it's that wordplay because grave and gravy sounds alike. So he's basically alluding to a line in uh, A Christmas Carol. When yes. uh, Scrooge is scared, he just ate a huge meal. He goes yep. to bed. He thinks it's indigestion. Yes, and he thinks it's mm-hmm. indigestion when he sees Marley, his old partner who has died and passed away, who begins his redemption story. Marley is there to help uh, Scrooge, Ebenezer, see the light. So, you know, it's we're all scared as an audience. It's the beginning of the story. And then here's right. this beautiful comedic relief where Dickens knows the audience needs it. Yes. He, he needs, he, you need to know that this, this is a ghost of good tidings and joy. Yeah. <laughs> Who's trying to help Scrooge, not, you know, scare him, but it's like, it's helpful comedic relief. Right. Um, I- this is not appropriate right here. Um, this wordplay and everything is amazing, but it's misplaced. Scrooge is yes. only at the beginning of his journey, not his rebirth. He's greedy, not guilty of murdering his father, and not seeing the father he murdered right before him. It's like saying to Han, oh, uh, you're no, you're just my beef that I just ate and has a digest. So no, you're just gravy. <laughs> what this would have been better with. <laughs> And I and I and I get why this was put in. It's the last vestige of Kylo Ren hanging on, trying to brush away his true self and his true nature. So I can see from a male point of view or a, a certain male perspective how someone could feel this may have fit in, and it fits in. If we get the Kylo Ren we saw in Tross. But as far as Ben Solo is concerned, it is, like you said, it's just an inappropriate place to put this. It would have served better to have this if Anakin were to come as a Force ghost. And Ben were to see Anakin for the first time. Knowing full well who he is, but, oh, this is, you know, yeah, thou art mayhap some... 
some undigested beef, thou art more gravy than come from the grave. It would have been very better placed if Anakin, Force Ghost Anakin, were to come into into play. With Han, this is a father and a son. Yes. And this is a father, whether it's a, a, a memory, hallucination, whatever have you or, or not, this is so, this is a, one of the biggest poignant moments for Ben Solo to get forgiveness from his father. And so it, it, it just, it does not land how, how it, it should, and it should not have been in here. Um, kudos to pretty much this entire thing with, with Ian, but, but this, this line, um, it, 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 well, it, it made us have some indigestion, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I feast of Going folly. on, though, going on is, is what is, it becomes beautiful again. Yeah, it's an oof moment. It's a, ooh, yikes. Uh, Amy showers with the super chat. Hi, Amy. I am here. I am here. Sorry for missing the last stream. Was mid-procedure. Glad you guys did another one and can catch this one even late. Amy. Thank you so much for being here. Um, not yes. to air your your personal woes, but Amy had some emergency surgery the last live stream we had, so she wasn't able to make it. And Amy is always a huge staple in our in our live streams. It's not but the same. she is doing so much better. Thank you, Amy. And I want to let everyone know this too. Just a just a quick tangent. Um, Amy sent us a message just, you know, discussing uh, things. And she stated that <laughs> she did not have her laptop with her. So her mother went and brought her laptop and all her Girls with Saber stickers are on the top. Well, the nurse that was the, I think it was the day nurse that was taking care of Amy, saw all the stickers and just said, oh, Star Wars got really excited and, and was talking about it. And, uh... So that's that's awesome that our stickers brought Star Wars into the conversation with Amy and the nurse. And I don't know the nurse's name, but if uh, nurse, if you are listening to this, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for taking care of our beloved Amy. And thank you so much to you and all of the the doctors and nurses and CSAs and everyone, all healthcare workers, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do and are doing amidst these crazy times. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And Amy, hopefully you are on the mend and will get much better very soon. Yes, indeed. It's not the same without you here, mm -mm. Amy. Like, we need someone to say that they need uh, smelling salts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all yep. things like that. I love that about you. <laughs> um, it's good to have a fangirl to freak out with. And it's just not the same without you. Okay. Um, what page? And thank you for your super chat. <laughs> we, we were still on page 11, correct, friend? Yes, so yeah. we got over the gravy bit, and Han says, Yes, tis thy memory whence I have come. Come home. Even in death, Han is still telling, telling Ben to come home. Kylo, nay, tis too late, for she is gone. Han, thy mother, truly, she is gone indeed. Yet all that she did stand for whilst she lived, and everything for which she bravely fought, tis not gone. And with thee it ne'er shall be. I'm going to do some Girls with Saber shout out with Brad from Friends of the Force. We Hi, did, Brad. Love you if you're listening. <laughs> we did a, a podcast collaboration with Brad over on his pod his, um, podcast. And I believe it was at one point in time his number one podcast. I believe it was on Raylo just before The Rise of Skywalker. But we said that Ben was going to fight for his mother's cause. So the issue is, is he is going there to help Ray and fight with Ray, but at the same time, he's also fighting for his mother's people when he's fighting with Ray. And we talked to, 
we talked to Brad about that, that that is him going to be a Skywalker like his mother before him, you know, carry on the banner of her love for the resistance and the new Republic. And I just love that thought right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll have to go back and watch that. Okay. Moving on. To the soliloquy yep. that's going to break my heart. Not soliloquy, oh. scene that's going to break my heart. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you could call it a, a, a soliloquy if you want. Um, but before that soliloquy, soliloquy happens, Ben and, and Han finish their moment. Ben, hear me, please. I know what I must do, yet fear I've not the strength to make it so. Thou dost and ear didst. Father, I, I know. <laughs> Kylo Ren turns around and throws his lightsaber into the sea. Exit, ghost of Han Solo. I love that Ian wrote this with all the um, the actions, you know, in the brackets. Oh. Yep, if you can hear us now, just refresh the page if you're still having trouble. Em, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. Oh, people are saying it's back. Okay. So, yeah. we go on to Kylo's soliloquy. Oh, and I love, I love the this. whole thing. I know you highlighted the end, which is which is dope, but, oh my gosh. I'm reading the whole soliloquy because it's so, good. oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, Winter Song asked if there was anything like um, soliloquy, and there is, and this is it. This is... Um, like the soliloquy that Henry VIII had when it was the eve of the Battle of Agnacourt. And he is very nervous about leading these men into battle. And at this time, he knows he could die, so he's praying. He's praying that his purpose now would be righteous and, and good, and that he would do the world good by this battle, and that he would lead his men to glory, and that their blood would not be spared. Um, spilt in vain, he asked God to forgive him of all of his folly and his evil in his youth and wants to use his life for good. So this is Kylo's Henry V soliloquy moment right here of penance and then, oh. and I'm going to use my life for good, not evil. Because I wasted my life on being Kylo Ren. Now I'm Ben Solo. And I was Prince Hal. And I'm Henry V, the king. It's so good. Now I have taken heart, thou vanished. Now I have taken heart, thou vanished. Sweet spirit, I would, ho oops, I would hold more talk with thee. This visitation marks a turning point. The end of one life as another starts. I must be str strong, remember my first call, and shun the folly that consumed my life. The years spent with the vile first order shall become the nadir of human life, the lowest rung upon my ladder tall, the ebbing of the ocean of my days, the bass notes of the symphony of time. However long my strand of life shall be, your fate ordains to clip it and release. Oh. Okay, that oh. Raylo memes, if you're still with us, that answers your question mm -hmm. right there. Um, to me, this these couple lines here are alluding to the fact that Ben knows he is going to die. In fact, we'll, we'll get to this point. I hope we yeah. did. But there is a lot in The Rise of Skywalker that everyone knew Kylo was about to die. Mm -hmm. However long my strand of life shall be, ere fate ordains to clip it, and release my life into the force forevermore, I shall exist to bring light to the world, deliver hope to those too long oppressed, make recompense for all the wrong I've done. The work beginneth now as I proceed to Exegol to face the Emperor. Oh, 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 <laughs> that... I shall exist to bring light to the world. That is like Christ imagery. Yes. Right there. Like that's what Christmas is, is, is the light has come. Well, the light has been solo. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts in the Ray Carson novel is Ray. When she is an exegol, she feels this great 
presence of light. And it's Ben. And when Leia sees Ben in the womb, she sees Ben uh. as a great band of light. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Defeating him must be the initial deed in making up for Kylo Ren's foul works. The name doth leave a rotten taste inside my mouth. What vanity to turn away. The name my loving parents proffered me. No evil knave. No longer Kylo Ren. I turn away from he who I was then. From now, I am a solo once again, the son of Han and Leia. I am Ben. <laughs> it, oh, I wonder if I can find Don't mind it. me, I'm just dehydrated myself. That, again, that's I am a solo like my father. I am yes. a Skywalker like my mother. I am Ben Solo. Oh my gosh. And it also goes back to the comic of the Age of Resistance Snoke, where... Ben is in, or Kylo is in the cave of Ondegaba, and he runs into his parents as his test, and his parents reach out to him and go, you are Ben Solo, and you are loved. And, oh my gosh, <laughs> that line reminded me I think me of we that. need to start a GoFundMe for Arts in the Armed Forces where Adam reads this. <gasps> So let it be written. So let it be done. We are going to do this and we're going to do it now. Like right after the live stream, we've got to, this has got to happen. So let it be written. So let it be done. <laughs> Lou, that was an amazing, amazing, amazing idea. I'm just, I, yeah, I'm locking on sunshine. <laughs> I want to say someone else said that in the comments too. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm going back. I'm going back. Oh, who said that in the comments, too? If you said in the comments, let us know. And uh, mods, if you said Everyone that... was saying, oh, my God, if Adam read this. And I saw that. Oh, okay. But I don't know if someone said Arts and the Armed Forces, too. But, no, we need to go fund me this with Arts and the Armed Forces. Yes. And yes. Adam needs to read this in a message to everyone. Yes. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're going to do that. Goes, all funds go to Arts and Armed Forces. It yeah. was Nora. Of course it was Nora. Nora. Yeah. Like I said, fundraiser time. Yep. Okay, we've got to do that. Nora, yeah. bounce in with us on that. Be our, be our co-founder uh, of that GoFundMe. We'll totally give you credit. Co-credit for that. Thinking of that. Done deal. We're going to start it. We'll, we'll start it, and we'll tag you, and, and we'll just, yep. we'll make it done, make it happen. Okay. Oh, she said I said we should get the cast to do a fundraiser for this because I will die. I will die, too. Morningstar, Morningstar said, said, uh, where is Morningstar? Sorry, I'm, like, trying to scroll up back in the chat. Morningstar said Arts in the Armed Forces. Trying to go up. Morningstar, if you're out there. Sorry, no one's hearing anything because I'm going back up in the chat. I can't see it. Morningstar, whatever you write, wrote, please write it again so <laughs> Lou can be at peace. <laughs> Amy Showers in the super chat. Thank you so much. You launch it, I'll be first there to pay over and over again. Oh, Pauline Harvey, Harvey. girls, it was me. Oh, there we go. Pauline, we will accredit you this if you let us proceed. Yep. We shall get this done. Yeah. Moving forward. To Exegol we go. Okay. Do, 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 beep, ba, do, boop, ba, do. Where are my slides? Exegol. Page 14, friend. <laughs> Slide I'm there. 14. Okay. Sorry, I was like still scrolling in the chat. Deep to doop. Yeah, but we're all in the same. Br uh, oh, Pauline said, yes, please. I'm going to do it. Do it. Okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot of your name, Pauline, so I know yep. who to say is whose idea it was. Okay. We're gonna put Pauline and Nora on it. Yes. Act five, Exegol. 
ray turns on luke's lightsaber now is my strange connection unto ben more powerful than e'er ever twas before he needs my help and i shall give it him that he may join the fight against palpatine palpatine do it in now make thou the sacrifice she places luke's lightsaber behind her head as it's about to strike the lightsaber transfers by the force to ben's hand ben ye saw that coming not i'll warrant ha <laughs> ben attacks the knights of ren with luke's lightsaber you know you know that was the so he said that with the solo shrug oh yeah 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 and this this gets to this gets to the fun that we did when we first saw a glimpse of the fun of the Mary Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Lou sent me a post, and then I did this. Um, when I was a teacher, we would have No Fear Shakespeare books, where it would be the Shakespeare iambic pentameter on the left, and then it would be the pentameter written in plain English on the right. Well, this is the Girls with Sabres version of translating the I Am a Contaminator into yep. what I've been is saying next. <laughs> Real quick, Rebecca Louise with the super chat. Thank you so much. Ben Solo being the last hope Leia always wanted back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Joseph Michael said, did you get my super chat? And we read that one. As far as I, it was, as far as I can tell, if you, are, yeah, Joe, we reread that. If you are a patron, I recorded myself reading a few passages last night. Yeah, and we said, uh, "What a treat for all our patrons!" And then we, yep, Amy Shower super chat. Yeah, so we we hit it, we discussed it, and then we were so busy with reading the Mary Rise of Skywalker that we haven't had a chance to listen to it. But I'm sure a lot of our other patrons did and, and enjoyed it thoroughly. But thank you for the super chat, Joseph. All right, continuing on, M. I'll, I'll read the Shakespeare if you want to read the Girls with Sabres translation, translation in plain Got English. It. Okay. Uh, so I'm reading the left, Luthien's reading the right. How good it feels to struggle for the light. Laura Santeca was right. I am remembering the truth about my family. It feels so good to fight with the right motivations. To know mine actions make my father proud. I am a solo like my father before me. To feel my mother's strength course through my veins. I am a skywalker like my mother before me. The training I once used into the dark is quickly churned upon my former friends. I am using the training that I received from Luke Skywalker and Snoke, training that I once used for the darkest of dark, to take out my old buddies. Hence, I am Prince Hal, turning my back to Falstaff, Poins, and my motley crew. Yeah, Prince Hal and the Henry V, before he turned, he would run around with a gang of thieves, um, a gang of people who would steal and plunder and... Uh, hang out in very vile places. Falstaff was this older man that groomed Prince Hal to basically do whatever Falstaff wanted to do and really led um, Hal down a horrible road. And you, these were, this, this crew, uh, Falstaff and his crew, really were Hal's friends from the time he was an early teenager to the time he turned his back on them and became Henry V. It's just like when Falstaff said, banish me and you'll banish the world, meaning if you banish me, you'll banish the pleasures of the world, all the fun that you have being uh, living in a life of wrongdoing. And Hal looks him in the eye and says, I do, I will, meaning I am going to banish you, I'm going to turn my back on you, and I'm going to live another life the life of King Henry V. So again, I see Romeo and Juliet, but I also see glimpses of King Hal and Henry V trilogy in here, and I love it. I am soaking it We're going to have to link those videos, too. Yes. <laughs> okay. When in doubt, Girls of Sabre's got a video on it. <laughs> Henry V, fourth part one, part two, and Henry V is my absolute favorite Shakespearean yep. play. And I say play, although it's three plays, it's... 
it's like Lord of the Rings. You don't get the full story unless you watch all three. If you want to see it, um, Tom Hiddleston plays the title role. He plays um, Henry V in the series of Hollow Crown. So if you want to check it out, that is a great adaptation to go watch. Continuing on, Ray says, a perfect two to overcome the one. Ben. I love that he's. it says Ben now, not Kylo. Yeah. A perfect two, strong daughter, mighty son. Palpatine uses the force to knock Ray and Ben to their knees. What I love here about a perfect two, strong daughter, mighty son, that just means a daughter and son in the force. They're not related, but just like you say, we are uh, children of Christ, or we're all God's children, or, you know, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, la 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 la. It's the same thing. A perfect two, a strong daughter, a mighty son. Well, it's also mighty son because he has the mighty Skywalker blood. Well, right, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then Palpatine yeets. Yeah. All right. Okay, moving on. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so. I'm okay. Then... That translates to, oh my God, what's coming up next is so good. <laughs> Soinks. <laughs> yeah. Enter Ben Solo through the trap door. And this is after uh, Ray defeats Palpatine. So yes, this is so the... Ben has been yeeted and now he's coming back. Once fallen, broken, yea, but not yet dead. I grope and fumble, finding purchase on the rock that I made to the scene once more, although I sense the enemy is gone. He climbs into the throne room and stumbles to Ray's side, sitting next to her. So soon turned ally Ray, and too soon gone. <gasps> Why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is, am is amorous, and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? <laughs> Straight out, lifted from Romeo and Juliet. Like, from Romeo's mouth. I mean, it's a word-for-word -word comparison. But I'll, I'll go back to uh, what we talked about with Palpatine on Exegol when, uh, during the prologue. Um, what did Palpatine say? I die before, yet death retains me not. The underworld is no match for the Sith. Mm -hmm. So that's what Romeo is talking about right there is... Um, death is keeping Ray in the underworld. So this is really his, um, his Orpheus and Eurydice, Eurydice, sorry, Orpheus and Eurydice, Eurydice's moment here is he wants to save his Juliet from, from hell's, the hell monster from Exodol, Exodol's monster. Because that's what paramour means. is like love. Mm -hmm. Like death wants to keep you as his love. Yep. Oh, good. Okay, so. Why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear that I still will stay with thee, and never from this place of dim, or this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here I will remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up on my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world wearied flesh. Eyes, look your last. He takes her in his arms. Arms, take your first and last embrace of her. <laughs> Still now thy thoughts, Ben, join her in the force. Whatever life I have within me yet, thus proffer I to her that she may live and in full recompense for who I've been. Okay, there again, the words in blue are the words that Romeo spoke. And it's, it, again, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a word for word uh, taking the... Practically the, verbatim. Yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Doster, you're, you, <laughs> you copied. <laughs> yeah. Um, the interesting thing is, is he does not say the yellow lines and lips. No. Oh, you, the doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss. 
which Romeo says that because what he's seen is he's going to kiss her and that kiss is going to seal him into yeah. the world of the dead with her. Mm-hmm. The right, the doors of this breath. is different. Ben is giving his life, but it's also saying he may not stay there because a seal right. is like something yes. that you are stuck in that place. And Ian didn't use those words. He, Ian didn't say that Ben is sealed with a righteous kiss. Correct. Sealed with the the, the doors of breath. Like it. Oh, that kiss was sealed. righteous, yeah. but it wasn't sealed. It wasn't sealing. It wasn't to seal him into death with her. Oh, it's pronounced Desher. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank Ian you. Desher. Thank you. We weren't sure. We are so sorry, Mr. Desher. We're sorry. We tried. Okay. And the Shakespeare doesn't end, but moving on. (laughs) Yeah. And in full recompense for who I've been and what I've done and wherefore I did so. Ben puts one hand on Ray's side and transfers life to her through the force. Ray revives and puts her hand on his. Ray. Oh, comfortable touch. Where is my foe? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am with Ben here by my side. Ben, thou didst come and saved me from... Oh, and then they kiss, and they smile at each other. Ben says, thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. <sighs> ben dies. And then Romeo says, thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Again, that's a word-for-word word exchange. However... That line is not from Romeo and Juliet's death scene. That line is from Act 1, Scene 5, and line 106, when Romeo and Juliet first meet at the Capulet's dance. That's when they compare each other to a pilgrim in a shrine, and they touch hands, and, uh, you know, they're like, you know, saints kiss sometimes would kiss the, the shrine or the, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, to, to like transfer obedience or allegiance or passion. And Romeo kisses Juliet and says, because I, like a pilgrim, kiss the shrine, well then now I am, all of my sin has purged. So I think it's interesting. I'm not saying that Ian knows anything or anything like that. I think it's interesting that he rewinds Romeo and Juliet to the very beginning of the relationship. I dig it. Amy showers with the super sticker with the cute little fox and a heart. Thank you so much. Aw. Sweet little fox. Ray, my life, I see, hath been his timeless... (laughs) <laughs> Maz, her son's tale ends and now she is she at peace thus doth the story of their wars surcease uh, this is this is something that uh, we both struggle with in the rise of skywalker that yeah. basically at uh Leia's journey end, her her death, she knew that her son was going to die. So, and that's why they held the saber. Because whoever would get Leia's saber would be the one um, to see that journey's end, that Jedi's end. So by Luke giving Rey Leia's saber, they're basically saying Ben is going to die. <laughs> because when Leia dies, Ben dies. And their deaths and their journey ends are linked. Here's what, though, y'all, and tons of other people agree with us that this whole scene was wackadoo edited. And what's happened truly is Leia, you know, Ben gives his life force to Ray. Beautiful, awesome, touching, everything it should be. Ben dies, obviously, because he gave his life force. Now, what does the mother do? She sacrifices her life for her son, and Leia, Leia's last act is to, why she was holding on, 
is to give her life force, the rest of it, to her son so he may live. And that's the look Maz has on her face. It's the it's it's everything a mother would do. It's it it, it rectifies everything back going back to Shmi and Anakin. A mother makes the ultimate sacrifice. And it's her love for her son. Uh, I will go to my grave believing that that was how it was supposed to be. Because it wakes, makes way more sense than what we got. It just doesn't make sense for Vader's death to mean that his son gets to live. Mm-hmm. And a mother's death means that her son dies. That yeah. just does not... It does not that's make sense. A, that's a flaming dumpster fire. And if you want, if you want Leia's wish to really, this is this is where a lot of us uh, female podcasters, and and I'm not the first one or the last one to say this. A lot of our uh, comrades say it as well. Mm-hmm. But the rise of Skywalker did not listen to what the characters said that they wanted. During the last two movies, Leia said repeatedly, I want my son back. (laughs) She wants her son home. That's what what Han said, too. I want my son back. She didn't say, I want my journey to end so my son and, and I can both be put to rest and die. She didn't say that. She said, I want my son back. And in order to... Uh, reward your characters and reward the people who have watched these characters, then you need to listen and fulfill what those characters needed. And the Rise of Skywalker fell to listen and fulfill the needs of the female characters. Rey says in in The Last Jedi, I want someone. I want someone. She didn't say I wanted a place. She didn't say, I want to be a Jedi. She didn't say any of that. She said, I want someone. But she ends up with no one. And that's why it doesn't, it's not just about we didn't get what we wanted. It's the fact that the characters didn't get what they wanted. It's not an ending if the heroine is pulled through all of this to come to the point where she never gets what she wants. And don't tell me that her friends on the Falcon and her newfound family are what she needs. No. <laughs> that was a singular pronoun, someone. And she also says in The Rise of Skywalker that no one knows her, but Kylo says, I do. And you know the filmmakers think that too, because when she says that to Finn, you hear Kylo Ren's theme in the background. Uh-huh. So there's this mass amount of uh, not just plot holes, but not listening to the women. And if you don't listen to women, you're not empowering them. I don't care what anyone says that Ray was given all of this to be an empowering female. No. Because she was never, never listened to. She was not given what she wanted. And third, the reason she defeats Palpatine is because all of the, the Jedi that have come before her gave her the strength to do it. So she didn't defeat him on her own strength. She defeated him by um, being a vessel of all the Jedi. Bev Davis with a super sticker. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bev, for the heart super sticker. Thank you. Thank you. As much as I loved your your sermon, Em, don't get me wrong. It was dope and preach it from the rooftops. We got to end this live stream. Yes. Can we sum up Ian Desher? Our qualms aside, this was a joy to read. And you, sir, mastered the flow 
and that iambic pentameter. Mwah. It was gorgeous. To read it was just gorgeous. It was a gorgeous read. And thank you so much for, for The Force Doth Awaken, for Jedi the Last, and for The Merry Rise of Skywalker. It was just so... It was, it's, it's, they are wonderful additions to this, this universe. If you, so thank you. Yes, yes. And a lot of our friends have, um, been inspired to have a medieval renaissance, which those are two different yes. eras, but you know, in our mind's eye and our, you know, our feeling <laughs> they're kind of linked, they're not. But if uh-huh. you want a medieval fill, um, for Star Wars and have some happy uh, listening music, um, check out our, our good friend Samuel Kemp's music because he has done a medieval version of some of our favorite John Williams scores. Um, and Jake, is it Bartok or Bar- Bartok? I think it's Bartok. Um, has done some beautiful renditions of some of our favorite um Star Wars heroes and heroines in a beautiful medieval style. And this is just killing me right here. And now it's just in tandem. Samuel Kim's music, he is using Jake's Mm -hmm. art. It's just so beautiful. And all those links will be in the description of this video. Jake Bartok's information, where you can see all his work, all of Samuel Kim's links, his main channel, plus... His, all the links to his medieval works, but all his works are good. All his different adaptations are good. His Raylo themes, the dopest of the dope. Ben Solo's theme. <gasps> ben Solo's theme too, yes. So definitely check out Samuel Kim Music if you haven't, and also check out the artwork of Jake Bartok, who is one of our participating artists and we have used before. He is so talented, and we are so blessed and thankful that he... Uh, very early on, he is one of the first ones who gave us permission to use his his works. Yeah. Uh, is just a wonderful, wonderful human being. So we thank them for their their art and their music and just their positivity to this fandom. Nora with a super chat. Love you guys and thanks for having this chat tonight. We all need some iambic pentameter in our lives. Hear, hear. Yay. Um, yes. Say goodbye, adieu to you. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. we realized that we ended this and had a few moments of negativity, which we don't like to do. But in order to analyze, sometimes you have to go down the road of this really does not meet the mark. That's just part Super of Super quick. Sorry. Hold that thought. Pin it. Joseph Michael asked, are we going to talk about the afterword? We actually talked about the afterword in the beginning of the, of the live stream. Oh, I think he's meaning, are we going to talk about Ray coming to Tatooine? Uh, oh. We, we really didn't. Uh, we tried to focus our, our stream on the Raylo content. Um, with Tatooine, I felt like it was pretty much cut and dry, like sand. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the thing that um, it does say is it does say that Ray's friends in the Falcon were just around the corner um, and that as she stares on the twin sons, she knows that her life, her journey has just begun, which if you need a better interpretation of that ending, then watch The Rise of Skywalker, and uh, speak Ray soliloquy over you. But I just felt like um, it did not really lend itself to discussion. Should I put yeah. that in, friend? Yeah, Geeky Stuff said, uh, were there any Finn Ray moments? Uh, Ian Desher said Finn and Ray were just friends. Yep. Finn is looking for his three friends. Uh, yep. And there was no, there was that moment where Finn was going to say something to Ray as they were um, being um, drowning in the sinking sands. There was that moment. But J.J. Abram said that Finn was going to tell Ray that he was force sensitive. So yeah. I think 
I think they just be friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have Romeo and Juliet and comparing it to, to Ray and Ben. So I guess that would make Finn Paris. <laughs> <laughs> So Amy showers with a super sticker, the cute little fox saying bye bye. Bye bye. What were you gonna say, friend, real quick? Oh, so if you want to talk to us some more, check out our social media at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Patreon. And we also have some awesome merchandise at T Public if you would like to peruse our merchandise. But since there was some negativity in this stream, we thought we would end it with some happy Raylo Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. So a long time ago, we did a uh, video um, on why Ray and Ben are not star-crossed. Uh, did that live up in age well? No. <laughs> but the thoughts they're in are still truth, right? Right. But we ended on a very happy comparison of looking at Shakespeare's Sonnet 116 and intertwining that with the red string theory. So we wanted to end the stream on a happy note and play um, Luthien reading Sonnet 116 and me um, intertwining the red string theory and give you all hope. These lovers may be star-crossed temporary, but they can always find each other again and be given a happy ever after. Anything else you want to say, friend, before I push play? Ben Solo lives. <laughs> Riddles in the dark. The two people connected by the red thread are destined lovers, which alters when an alteration finds, regardless of place. Or bends with the remover to remove, regardless of time. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken, regardless of circumstances. It is the star to every wandering bark. This magical cord may stretch or tangle, but never. Bye, friends. Peace, love, and Raylo. Bye-bye.